Uh, Rich Baker, personal wing, Steve Gray and I are at that flight level 370, flying one of about 32, 34 Citation jets with a G1000 upgrade. It's very unique, awesome set of avionics, and uh, we're going to go through the system, how it works, how we use it. Tigre and I are flying along at uh, flight level 370, 37,000 feet. On our flight from San Diego, Mike Yankee Oxtrot Airport, that's Montgomery, down to uh, San Jose del Cabo, Mike Mike Sierra Delta, uh, one of the international airports down there. So we're flying the Cessna Citation Jet, also called the Straight CJ, because that's what it is. It was the first uh, Citation Jet that uh, nomenclature. We've got our Williams engines uh, powering us down here. And so this is pretty cool. This is one of only 34 that uh, have been converted to the G1000 before Texron stopped the conversions. It's a beautiful conversion. Wish they would have done more because it's really, really nice. It takes a lot of the old legacy original avionics out and uh, not only uh, updates it to the G1000, but it also, when they did the upgrade, they removed 170 pounds worth of stuff, old radios, et cetera, like that. So it really helped a lot in this plane with our, our useful load. So it's pretty cool. It has a different panel, uh, black, and it matches well. Over on the left in this panel, nothing really changed here. So all the standard features are here of the Citation Jet. In fact, virtually all the 525 series has this same layout. So you have your electrical system, your power, Avionics power, our uh, boost pumps, our avionics uh, tests, we go through a lot of the systems, our engine starters, igniters, etc., and all our lights down here. And then the same thing down here, we've got our windshield bleed air, and then virtually all this is the same. In fact, one for the G1000, this is the same panel. I said most CJs have identical or very, very close. What the big difference is, is you see how clean this whole panel is. Over here, what we've got, we've got dual audio panels. They're not synced, so each one of us can decide which radios we want to use. T right now is on, on two. I'm on one. I'm listening to all the ATC Mazelon Center right now, so he doesn't have it uh, listening to it, but it's also not recording, so it's a little quieter. So we have all of our controls there, including a music switch, so we can listen to XM on this. So we've got the, the G1000 PFD. Uh, with uh, We have synthetic vision in it, in it, which is great. Of course, I can change all my sensors in here, the inset, see what I want to look at. I can see topo in here. I can set it to traffic. Traffic 2 is my favorite one. I've got that. So in here, I can set up everything. Our PFD, we have synthetic vision on and off. I can turn it off if I want, but why? No reason. It's just so, so nice to have. You can do pathways. I don't like those boxes. I find them... Uh, and not really necessary. Some people like them, but you can do that. It uh, just gives us airport signs as well as horizons. So that's pretty cool. So in here, we've got this set up. We're cruising along. We're flying on our GPS. So this is a really nice setup, right? And I always like to fly with the, uh, the flight plan and set up, and then I turn it off so it progresses. You don't want to turn it on and leave that flashing, of course. You turn that off by pressing the center knob. So this is pretty cool. In here, I can do anything it's like my procedures, my approaches, arrival, departures if I want to. I can hit menu. There's no menu on that one, but if I come back to here and load this, then here I activate legs, air flight plans, load airways, expand, parallel tracks, offsets, all those features that you can do with. That's pretty cool. Over on uh, the, the MFD and through here, right, our MFD, cool thing about this is this eliminates what's called the N1 computer. Uh, that was an option, actually, in original CJ. A lot of this, uh, oh, the CJ2s had them, even uh, have them on some of the other uh, airplanes without FedEx. And the, the N1 computer was to help set up the values here for N1. So, for example, here's our target N1 here. When we take off, we can just take off, go around. We set this. You'll see that changes. We put in our, when before we take off, if we're in here, we set our, our temperature so it can compute that for us. Then in the climb, we have that setting, which would be 100.1. And then now we're, of course, in cruise. 
which is 100.3. So we're just a little bit under. It's fine. You just don't want to be over. So that helps us set our N1 since we don't have a FADEC. While the FADEC is really cool, this makes it life pretty easy. The FADEC also will be a little bit more accurate in terms of fuel flow and control, obviously. The FADEC being standing for full authority digital engine controls. Our ITTs here, right now we're, we're flying around about 750. This range changes depending upon uh, our phase. So right when we start the engines, that expands so we see more uh, data up at the higher end. Of course, then it has the rest of our information, our N2, PSI for our oil, pressure, uh, temperature, and of course in our fuel. So we've got that set up. So pretty cool, pretty nice setup. As we're flying along, we've got all that other information on the standard. 1000. So up here, of course, we have, we've we put these blocks. I like these. Our ETA tells us what time we'll be there, UTC. Our true air speed right now is 350 knots. we got a little bit of tailwind. Our ground speed's uh, 368. That's our time, and we're going to have 1,054 pounds left. We can really, on this airplane, land with a VFR reserve somewhere around five 600 pounds, but I like to be conservative. I like to make sure that we have at least 1,000 when we land, and uh, you never know. Whenever you go into Mexico, a lot of the airports are single runway airports, and if they're jammed, what do you do? And some airports, in fact, don't even have taxiways, so you have to back taxi, so you always want to have an alternative. Uh, San Jose del Cabo is pretty large, has taxiway, no problem, so if somebody's disabled, they can get them pretty quickly. But in other words, we want to be able to have options. So other features like that, it's really nice. Got that said, of course, we don't have any weather in Me XM weather in Mexico. This is our route down through here. It's a typical one we take down. So we come down uh, across Tijuana. Usually SoCal gives us direct to uh, uh, Tijuana. We go down here, and then I'll show you the flight plan and through here. So we're going down on this flight plan. That's where we are now. We start up here, Montgomery, Mission Bay. Never go to Mission Bay, really. Tijuana, and then Upper Tango 6, which is a jet route. Upper Tango 25 from Loretto down. Then Tigre and I, we always get an echo. And uh, so that's Victor 4 to, to an echo. And right in here, in fact, what we can do is actually we can put that altitude in here. So in here, the really cool thing on this plane with this U-1000 is I've got a full keyboard down here in the center. It's a full way to be able to enter values. So we know that we get 200, we get 20,000 feet. So I'm just going to here. And you can see right now, up here, that's loaded to 20,000. I hit enter key got that set. So right now, we know that's typically what they give us. So now we have a vertical profile. Actually, time to descent over here, we'll get stop that flashing, is uh, 44 minutes. And now it'll show up on our flight plan. So we try to plan ahead. We want to have a good situational awareness of everything. Uh, one of the things we really like to do, we didn't hear, is let's go ahead and put in guard 215 to monitor. We were just checking frequencies a second. Now we've got that, and we're monitoring in case we miss a call or somebody else needs help. So we've got everything set up, and so we've stored these flight plans. works out great. If you come to flight plan, you see here we have flight plan. I call them chapters, major functions, and I have the inner knob moved to the page, and we've stored this. And this one is stored as the Montgomery, San Jose del Cabo, Upper Tango 6, Upper Tango 5. So we filed that one. It's a nice one. It works well. There's a couple other routes down, but that really is a good one. That's that we use. We got this all set. Come back here. So now we've got that all kind of set up. We've got our current charts on our iPads. The charts we have for uh, these are out by a couple days on the MFD, but of course we've already got that set here. That's the airport. And we come here and let's say, hey, let's look at parking spots. So it's really cool. This is actually tell us all the different parking spots in, so in here. But we'll see which ones uh, give us the closest ones. So oh, these are parking spots in here. That's really good if you're coming in and you're flying in the in the airlines. For us, we're going to see if we have it in here. This is where we're parked. So this will be really handy because when you land in Mexico, they tell you a parking spot. So right away, we've got our parking spots right there. So it's kind of cool. You don't have those every at every airport in the U.S., but when they do have them, it's pretty nice to have it. That's why when you hear people forth you have that information. Then most likely what we're going to get is we're going to uh, do it a, a, an arrival. So we're going to look at the stars here. So down here we can pick the star and uh, let's see which one. If they're using, let's look at what this 
chart, right? There's a couple different ones. So let's see what, what the, there's an echo, right? So we know the 200 is probably what they're going to give us, so we just load that in there. Depending upon which runway we use, right now and through here, this is all landing 1-6. So it comes into Marooks and Maroc, and then down to 1-6. So we've got that loaded. If they change runways to 3-4, then we can just go ahead and change that. But otherwise, that's that approach. We can pick that. It's RNP. Down in Mexico, RNPs are RNAV approaches. So different than the U.S., where some RNPs have radial to fix, and you're not proved to do that in the G-1000s. Uh, not in this installation, but this is a regular LPV approach. So let's come down and verify it's LPV. What is it? There's an LNAV, excuse me. There's an LNAV, not an LPV down there. So we've got that. So that tells us what our, so we all set there. Weather. We'll get weather. Uh, before we left, we might have been able to get when we had the XM, but Sirius XM doesn't work. And that's our that's our routing there. So it's pretty cool. Also, with the G1000, you get this continent standby, which is amazing. It's really nice. Boy, it just it, uh, boots really fast, so that's really handy. The rest of the plane's pretty much the same, other than now we have a different, you notice here, this is our uh, autopilot control panel, our mode panel. So it works very similar to any other G1000. Some G1000 planes, like on our 206, uh, have altitude controls, etc., and autopilot controls on the bezel of the display units themselves. Not the case here. So here we have our heading, of course, right where we're in nav mode. We have course, and through there, this is useful when you're trying to do a course direct, like an omni bearing selector, flight director, transfer. Now we're in bank mode. Bank mode, as you notice in here, on the PFD shows us that the max bank is going to be 15 degrees and it does that at high altitudes because you don't want to do excessive banks. This way now it'll do 30 degrees. So uh, half bank it does it automatically or you can also put that on yourself. Autopilot flight director, altitude vertical speed, VNAV, approach flight level change. Also on some autopilots called IAS for indicated airs, allows this to uh, climb or descend if you want to at a, at a civic speed. And through here on this speed, this actually changes it from mock to indicated air. But you can switch it if you want to, or it'll switch automatically to altitudes. And this is our course. So this course one adjusts the course and so forth on my uh, PFD, and this one adjusts it on uh, Tigray's PFD. So he's uh, flying right seat today, and we swap swap legs. So that's the installation. It's really cool, really nice. You see, it's a it's a beautiful display. It's too bad uh, Textron stopped doing this uh, upgrade because it's really a value add for the for the Citation Jet. And off. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching our video with Tigre and I going through the uh, G1000 version of the Citation Jet. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below. Like it. Hopefully you like our video. Watch more. And then we also have our website, personalwings.com. This has got more information as well as a list of uh, articles that uh, we've written in various magazines. Primarily Twin and Turbine. Oh, and we're going down to Mexico. If you don't subscribe to Twin and Turbine, you really should. Um, besides, if you if you want to, the March 2022 uh, magazine on the cover has our cover article. It's flying to Mexico, plus other issues that pop up. Gives you a little bit of information about how to fly into Mexico. Joining Bob Bush Pilots is a good recommendation. Um, there's a n number of other groups, but Bob Bush Pilots is pretty cool. It's one we use primarily when we fly into Mexico. All right. Thanks again for watching.